Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? So, I don't know who needs to hear this today. Um, I hope it reaches the right person and it changes your life forever. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but it's wearing on my heart. God has said to me, you need to put this out there. Somebody needs to hear it. I don't know who it is. God ordered me to do it. Therefore, I'm going to do it. So when I first moved to Chicago from New York, my mom died. She died of diabetes. Um, I was a high school dropout. Um, I came to a state to live with an uncle that I did. I, I didn't know him straight up. I didn't know him. Um, I came all the way to Chicago because my mom, my father did not want to take me in because he remarried. Um, you know, he was, I'm sorry. He was already married. I was a bastard child. Okay. I was born out of wedlock. I'm, I'm, I'm that jump off baby, right? He was already married, got with my mom. My mom got pregnant. That's what happened. I'm a jump off baby, straight up. Um, he didn't want to take me in because he was married and the wife did not, didn't want nothing to do with me. Came down to Chicago, met my uncle, huge influence in my life, convinced me that I did have what it takes to be somebody in this world. Because if you were to look at me when I was younger, I was a misfit. Um, I, I wasn't on shit, dude. Like many people counted me out in life. They said, this kid is going to go to jail, prison. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, in their eyes, I wasn't shit. And it, uh, you know, it fucks with your self-esteem, no matter how strong you are, man. If you continually hear negative things like that in your life, it will affect you. So I come down to uh, Chicago. My uncle helps me get my high school degree at Roberto Clemente. I was a super, super senior, meaning I graduated high school at the age of 20 years old. I was the oldest dude in that school. Roberto Clemente on division. That's where I graduated. Um, within that year, my uncle passed away. All right. When my uncle passed away, now this was the part what, that was really, really, really hard. The apartment that I lived in with my uncle, the landlord said, hey, your name isn't on the lease. You're going to have to get out. I was a receptionist at Bally Total Fitness at the time. I did not have enough money to put down for a deposit and first month's rent. Dude, I was crushed. I thought I was going to be homeless in Chicago where I didn't have anyone. Um, I wasn't close with my family at the time. Um, excuse me, it's it, a little bit hard to talk about it, but again, God put this on my heart to, to reach out to somebody that needs to hear this shit. Um, I had, I bought a Mustang for $300 that a lady was selling. So I was like, worst come to worst, I'll sleep in my car, right? If I'm homeless and I don't have a place to stay, worst come to worst, I can sleep in my car. So I went around and I started begging everybody at the health club to help me get a place, you know, give me some money so I can get a place to live so I wouldn't be homeless. And humbling, humbling experience, because when you're in a position like that, you got to throw pride out the window. You can't be you know, braggadocious and arrogance when you broke as shit, right? So I asked everybody, I asked personal trainers, receptionists, janitors, uh, salespeople, general managers for help. I'm in Chicago. I don't know anybody. I need money. They're about to kick me out on the streets. I was 21 years old. I didn't know what to do. My job wasn't paying enough. I finally scraped up the money to put a deposit down and get a place in Edgewater in Chicago on the north side. 
small little studio apartment. I mean, like so small. The kitchen is in the living room. The living room is in the bedroom, and the bathroom is like right there. It's it was that small, but I was able to see the lake from the window, which was therapeutic for me. While I was moving my stuff in my Mustang, I'm take I'm, I'm parking in the back, and then I'm taking my stuff upstairs and putting it in this new apartment that I have. I come back downstairs and they tow my Mustang away. They towed my Mustang with all of my stuff inside of it. When you ever been in a situation where you're like, God damn, like I can't get a fucking break. Can I not get a fucking break? Um, everything was just crushing down, man. I'm losing family members. I'm by myself in a whole different state. And it was hard, man. And it was there was a point in my life where it was like, what are you gonna do, man? Are you are you going to get down or lay down? Are you going to live or are you just gonna lay and kill over and die? That was such a hard decision for me because I was already at a sunken place. I was already fucked up in the game, no money. They just repossessed my car. I got an apartment. I don't know if I'm gonna make make enough money for the rent and stuff like that. And it was it was crushing. I lost my mom. I lost my uncle. It was it was a very low low point in my life, man. If somebody would have came to me at that time, and I'm I'm gonna be a hundred percent with you, man. If somebody came to me and said, "Hey, man, bury your sorrows in these drugs right here," I would have did it. I would have did it because I, I I didn't have no desire to go on. I didn't have no desire to live on and shit, man. And but I knew that I did not want to go out like a punk. I knew that I did not want to just give it up, right? So I fought. I fought. I fought. I did everything that I could. I worked overtime. I I, I went to bookstores and I'm telling you guys this because some of you guys may be listening to this and you, you don't see a way out. Your environment is fucked up. Your household is fucked up. The, the, your money, your pockets is fucked up and you don't see a way out. I'm trying to share something with you on how I was able to find a way out and maybe this can work for you. I used to take a train, the red line train and get off on Belmont and walk all the way to the bookstore. They had a Barnes and Noble bookstore over on uh, Diversity. I would sit there for hours, hours, and I would just read books on self-development. I would just read books on sales, on persuasion, just trying to get my fucking mind right. And I found a book, it was an Anthony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. And that book, help me as long as another a bunch of other books as well but when i could not find a mentor when i could not find a person to lean on when i could not find a person to help me through the struggles it was books that did it books that was my escape from reality and the things that i learned the because your life will change around you once you change what's in here. When you change your mindset, that's when everything else changes around you. If you're a ball of negative energy and you are that, that dark cloud and you're walking around, everything around you looks cloudy, even in a sunny day. So I, I indulged in books and I'm not gonna say it was easy, but, and I still do it today. I still listen to self-development. This was before YouTube. Now there's YouTube. Now I listen to self-development in on YouTube. Les Browns, the Eric Thomas, you know, the people that came out with the, the movie The Secret. All of those things help me out, man, because dude, this shit is this shit is rough out here. Fast forward today, I'm not in those positions anymore. But I try to document my journey because I want you guys to see that, hey, look, through thick and thin, you're you're actually witnessing a person on their road to greatness. 
And if I can do it, a high school dropout wind up becoming a wind up getting their high school diploma at the age of 20, being left back twice, um, not the smartest kid in school. If I could do that shit, you can do it, man. So peace, love, and happiness to all you guys. I wish you the very best in your family. One.